So, uh, very good morning and uh, good afternoon to the August gathering. I am very happy to greet you with good morning and good afternoon as it is a true uh, international forum. On behalf of the organizing committee of uh, Big Data IoT AgriTech work Workshop, I welcome today's speaker, uh, Dr. Shravan Gupta, Professor Balaji, Professor Barbara, uh, Dr. Igor Jursik, uh, and Dr. Uma Chandran. I extend a warm welcome to all the participants and hope this session would be a, would be of a great interest to you all. The workshop touches upon two vast areas. One is the big data and another one is IoT. Uh, as you all know, data is enormous nowadays. Almost all our youngsters, working men and women are using a lot of electronic gadgets like cell phones, laptops, tabs, etc. These electronic gadgets generate a lot of data through WhatsApp, Facebook, Telegram, and so many. And do you know how much content or the digital content is being created every day? One survey says that we create roughly around 2.5 quintillion uh, bytes of data, and Google processes more than 20 petabytes of data every day. Do you know what is the measure of quintillion, it is approximately one into 10 to the power of 18. So we have one followed by 18 zeros. Just imagine how much amount of data is being created every day. So data is oil nowadays. You can extract information, you can dig information and you can do wonders with data. That is what the business people are doing currently. I also wanted to share a few more facts with you. The current pandemic affected um, many businesses, particularly in the uh, first wave. Uh, but the investments in big data as well as in AI is skyrocketed and become a full-blown business due to the digital transformation. And some of the facts are one airline saw the cancellation request on an average of 500 to 4,000 per day. So imagine the cancellation request per day, it is around 4,000. So how could they manage only through big data as well as some kind of automation through artificial intelligence only, they'll be able to manage such situation. And in another instance, a large bank had to update 6 million loan records. So this is approximately uh, will take uh, in reality previously before this pandemic, it will take two years of time with 100 uh, people. Uh, working continuously, then only they can manage this kind of updation that is 6 million loan records. And in another instance, uh, meal delivery service from USA, Sun Basket faced a sudden spike of 50 percentage during the pandemic. And they need to adapt their customer services also in order to sustain their businesses. And uh, Economic Times uh, states that the Big Basket as well as in India, Big Basket is very famous, you all know. So Big Basket and Gophers double their delivery during this pandemic. So all these, how to manage these enormous amount of data, uh, we need uh, data analytics and we need artificial intelligence so that we can make some kind of uh, automation into that. So that uh, data analytics to dig the data as well as to get the knowledge and inferences so that we can increase the business and uh, we can uh, invent a few more things also. And big data and AI is not just for computer professionals. Now it has uh, made its footprint in almost all the applications like medical, agriculture, robotics, automation and so on. And we have lots and lots of applications for both uh, big data as well as AI. And the data which is supplied for these two things, it is the IoT. So uh, in case of different applications, like in medical, the machine learning, deep learning are used in disease identification, prediction, and classification. In agriculture also, we have drought detection, crop yield prediction, uh, crop uh, disease identification, and uh, which are possible with uh, artificial intelligence. And few more examples like smart home, building smart home, uh, smart city can also be uh, done through machine learning, deep learning, and uh, we need to collect the data through IoT only. So this is where IoT plays. So it is all integrated in general. So we have IoT to collect the data and then we have big data to perform the analysis and then we have uh, AI to do uh, kind of automation. And this workshop covers the basic facts of uh, industry 4.0, precision agriculture, facts of IoT agriculture, 5G technology, 
big data and data analysis um, and so many. Uh, and uh, the experts uh, and the panelists are here to explain you uh, with all these uh, information and hope this workshop will enrich your knowledge in the field of big data and IoT. I wish you all a very happy learning and bright future. All the very best. Thank you. I welcome you all once again for this workshop. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Annie, for a good introduction. And uh, let me share my screen uh, so that we can uh, do the presentation. Okay, I hope uh, you people can see my screen, right? Somebody uh, prompt me. Yes, 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 yes. Right, right. So this uh, topic of big data and IoT enabled uh, agriculture technology on which I'm gonna uh, talk to you is, um, is a kind of uh, evolution of our research. See, this research we started somewhere in the year uh, 2012. See, uh, when uh, Germany came up with the idea of uh, Industry 4.0 in 2009, and when it rolled out in 2010, uh, it took about a year for us to understand what is Industry 4.0. Uh, that is the year 2011 went on in our chronology. And in 2012 onwards, uh, we are into this uh, topic of big data and IoT. Uh, in, in the, uh, you know, the total a la carte uh, of these two as a menu, uh, what happens is uh, all these fall into uh, the topic called uh, Industry 4.0. See, in big data and IOTs are technologies. It means behind technology, there is an engineering. And behind engineering, there is a science. So we need to know what is the science that makes big data and IOT come together today. From that aspect onwards, I'm going to just cover you. And I leave it to the experts to come up with the lot of uh, inputs that they can uh, shove it for the um, participants to understand. Uh, see this, um, uh, you know, this industry 4.0. Again, when it comes to the index called 4.0, that means there are three in, uh, you know, uh, revol uh, revolutions that, have, uh, that has already happened. So I'm not going to touch any of these introductions onto the revolutions, but these uh, things, whatever happened in the first, second, and third revolution are continuously taken through in the industry 4.0. That is the fourth revolution. This fourth revolution is so phenomenally connected with all the three other re revolutions by the term called physical machine. If you have a machine or a gadget or a device or an equipment, be whatever it is, that is called a machine. And that machine, is being connected to this revolution by the cyber state, which is called the computing through internet. So you will have the, the third revolution connected with these uh, first two revolutions along with the internet. That is the fourth revolution we are picking up. See, if you want to have internet connected, internet is a kind of a pathway, you know, where you create the opportunities to be handled by the computing device so that it can signal your physical device or the physical machine or gadget or whatever it is. To have this happen, we are having the circuit of sensory input that is called the sensors and environment, which we call it as IOTs. See, the sensors are spread all across, but when the sensors keep spiking data, then that you know, sensor is always a physical uh, in a mud, uh, variation that they give. This physical variation has to be converted into electrical variations through your transducer and then converted into the binary converter. And then this data is the one which goes into your computer. So this data, which goes into your computer is the one which actuates either for as a feedback or as an interlinking between the machines. Sensors along with the state have to be used with some kind of an intelligence. This is where the real part of industry 4.0 comes. As the, the um, uh, you know, introducing uh, Professor Annie said about the intelligence of artificial intelligence that's required here. Uh, artificial intelligence is adding our normal common sense. How do we get the computer or the uh, in a cyber state equipment do the intelligence part? So you have to have a kind of a 
an algorithmic uh, requirement where AI has an algorithm because it has to go in with connecting things. Uh, so you need to have a kind of a formula that is connected with the big data, that is the data science. And then you would go on what, what is right, wrong, and uh, you know, to be maintained the, the previous experiences with us. So AI is a co combination of your algorithm, big data, and your past experiences. So these are put together in this pipeline where the physical machine takes co consideration of all these things. But what happens with this intelligence is, intelligence again is like a kind of a, a, a logic um, gate, like an AND gate or an OR gate or whatever it is. Like, you know, you make a kind of a con congregation of information and then you make an end state to it. So it is anything between zero to one, whether you accept it or you don't accept it. But there are certain things in life which goes on with, uh, you know, go, going through a lot of auto response or in incremental change. That is where comes the machine learning or deep learning. See, if your IoT is completely user-defined function, like, you know, you, want to you get into a room and you want to put your fan and that should be automated. So you can have a motion sensor. When a motion sensor uh, sees you entering, it will switch on your uh, inner motor. That is your fan. And the fan can run. At the same time, you can also build in an intelligence where if the temperature of the room outside is more, accordingly, you can reduce the speed. That is, you use a definite. That is where ML comes. ML can adjust with multi-sensor inputs, and then it can do. Whereas DL is user dependent. When you are coming and you cross the sensor, and then the, your body temperature is also being calculated, then accordingly the motor or your variable frequency drive will change the input to your fan. That is where it comes as deep learning. So deep learning takes all the senses required by the people and the you or the end user who's going to use it and then do it. Whereas a machine alone controls, it's called a machine learning. And uh, this is this combination of physical machine, cyber state, sensors, intelligence, and auto response is called the industry 4.0 machine. This machine can be you know, accommodated to many of these technologies which are connected to it. Technologies in industry 4.0 are. Uh, you know, uh, they, uh, we have created a kind of an acronym also. It's 2S, 2C, 2A, IVR. Simulation, systems, systems integration, cybersecurity, cloud computing, additive manufacturing, augmented reality, IoT, big data, and robotics. To understand it better, it's 2S, 2C, 2A, IVR. The other parts I'm not going to cover whatever I'm showing in the screen because this is quite a big uh, length. Everything cannot be completed on Industry 4.0 in one slide. Coming now to uh, the, uh, the hero of this uh, session, which is the agriculture. But before I introduce this uh, hero, uh, the agriculture into industry 4.0, let me tell you the scenario on which agriculture is being seen today. This is the scenario. See, agriculture uh, has a recent impact on it. Like, you know, everyone is talking about organic and everyone is talking about ICT involvement into this agriculture. All these years, people were not bothered about what the poor farmer was doing all these days. He used to get up early in the morning, go to the farm, you know, toil till the light go, goes down and by afternoon end, he comes home and relaxes. So people all thought he was having a busy, you know, a kind of a cozy life and they did not bother about it as long as their food was you know, maintained. But later, due to many changes in climate, uh, productivity down and uh, pests uh, uh, ruining the productivity of uh, food crops and all those stuff, and uh, synthetic farms, uh, uh, you know, synth synthetic chemicals having spoiled the uh, quality of uh, food, everything, people were talking about organic. So organic is one important part that has gone into agriculture. So now everyone wants to have a good food. So organic is being talked about. And as long as now we didn't know about what a farmer does, so we don't know what is his Latin knowledge or his explicit knowledge. So we want to have ICT involved into it so that we pick this data. This, these are the two real reasons on which agriculture is bought into industry 4.0. See, organic is being consumed. You, uh, you use it and you live with it, whereas ICT is enabled so that you flourish with it. See, er organically, what you see is the end product on which you are going to try and solve it. But every time you cannot have the end product, uh, you need to control also your processes and the environmental de degradation that goes with the end product. So organic has a bigger spectrum and a big picture. 
And uh, ICT has a lot of inputs like uh, facilitation, identification, traceability, and the uh, sustainability. This is where you are, uh, you and me, everyone, are linking ourselves towards uh, Industry 4.0. See, this Industry 4.0, linking being uh, linked with uh, agriculture, has a new notations like, see, when um, uh, people, uh, you know, kind of an educated mass or uh, not, uh, not really an agriculturist gets into a farm, he or she tries to do simple innovations like bottle feeding a plant. Because we don't have water, we wanted to make the plant be alive. So we wanted to give it through a lot of uh, inputs like drip irrigation. Drip irrigation came only because of this. You know, we, we were not having enough water. So we try, uh, started showing like glucose bottle being used into uh, water uh, you know, for a dripping analysis. Or we took up examples what happened in Africa for uh, planting machines. Uh, you know, CCM seeds and all came into picture. And then even from uh, our uh, north sides of India, like uh, Haryana and Punjab, there uh, they had a uh, lot of the ginger and turmeric planting machines come up. All these things started evolving as innovations in agriculture. But these were not making enough money for those people who are making agricultural machinery. Agricultural machinery manufacturers, they went uh, not into the process of agriculture, but they spread themselves around like getting onto a tractor, uh, ATV or a truck or a loader or a cultivator or a uh, you know, sprinkler or anything, but not into the real. The real part is they did only fertilizers, herbicides and all the stuff, but nobody went into real agriculture because they don't know what is agriculture. And, uh, but, uh, you know, industry goes, spins and, uh, you know, we, we go through. So as the centric, uh, you know, innovations happen today, with IoT and big data, what we have is a lot of changes that has come through Industry 4.0. You see on my left, there's a, in a Japanese woman trying to lift about a 20 kg kind of a bag effortlessly using a power suit called exoskeleton. When you link this kind of an exoskeleton to your body, what happens is, uh, you know, um, it helps you easily maneuver, maneuver the weight. You can easily pick up the weight and you see, and, and the joints, the manipulated joints of uh, your, uh, and, uh, the, the, the framework, what you have connected to your body, easily pushes you. And to, uh, to the next uh, slide, which you can, and uh, the picture which I've shown you, you can see, um, there is a person who is uh, showing uh, and cutting the grape wine. See, when your arm is going to be in the same position for a longer duration, you are going to ergonomically suffer. So you have infringements or uh, in a paraphernalia that is, you can connect to your body, this is the same power suit. And for the same position, you can keep your uh, inner body inner, uh, settled for doing a strength requirement, which, is, uh, which, uh, which will help you, uh, help you in your farming, farm working. This is where the kind of things which have already started coming up. This is one small example of what uh, um, Japan has done. And next uh, to it, you can see drones. Drones was also, uh, you know, con uh, con connected during our introduction. Drones can now wait, lift the weights. It can do spray, uh, spraying. It can have uh, scanners and cameras to go around, watch what's happening around, and then pick uh, the data. And it, it can also help us in augmented reality. We have ma your weed man uh, management, et cetera. So you have a precise sampling of mapping and testing with uh, you know, ge uh, geographical positioning system and the information system to identify the micro requirements and macro requirements of the plant, right from its uh, nutrients, salient, uh, salinity, carbon content, and all these things are now completely captured, which were otherwise known only to the farmer through his experience. The next part is you have now, uh, you know, the, the, the tenderness or the, the way how we handle things. Like when you take a robo now and pluck a, uh, you know, a potato plant uh, or uh, sorry, uh, fruit. See, these are the things where you really feel the plant and you pluck, uh, pluck it. You don't just pluck all the ripe, uh, unripe ones and you bring it. You need to know which is ripe and unripe. So you, we have now facilitated robotics to do all these kinds of a plucking in plants. And in uh, University of Wageningen, uh, what they have done is they have used even deep learning and algorithms to uh, handle the cucumber growth. So all these things are IoT connected and these are connected with the DPL. 
So what they can do is they can identify how much of a light is required, water is required, carbon dioxide is required, fertilizers and temperature, et cetera, through deep learning, through the IOTs, that is the user dependent. This deep learning co concept has already gone in. Now coming on to uh, you know, what's happening other, uh, in other parts like uh, uh, Israel. Israel has gone one more step ahead. Like you know, they can identify what goes inside the fruit or a plant. See, this is a plant beat identifier, IoT, where when, when this is being connected to the plant, it identifies what happens inside the plant and then it gives you an input for the predictive modeling. And in, uh, in the US, they have identified, uh, gone, gone with the distributed autonomous system, where it's a kind of an ATV or all-terrain vehicle, which goes, it is uh, in a, like an ammunition controlled one. It has a lot of uh, uh, cameras connected with it. Spray. You have drones in it, sprayers in it, um, uh, scanners in it. Everything is uh, in, a, in one shop. It goes in and that location, what is required, that is being done, virtually controlled, and then you, you get uh, in a right information and you do the course corrections on it. You know why? In addition to this, people want to see from sky. Like how we do it with our Google Earth. You know, you, you see from the top, you can get, get down to all the roads and uh, buildings. Like you can see what is happening in a farm. You have a drone connected with a uh, you know, scanner and that image scanner picks up the same uh, right location. And when the line of sight of information connects to the real world, then the action takes up by the computing device. So you have all these things being placed now through industry 4.0. See why all these things? Because agriculture is a business today. It's no more called, you know, you, you are going to have it as an art or a science. No, it's a business. So we uh, you know, are in this era, era of calling brack a brack. Uh, and also we say productivity, yield, income, which are the normal things on which uh, you know, agriculture business is uh, uh, placed on. It also has techniques, improved, improvised methods, researches, livelihood, prosperity, activity, management, all the growth investments, market expansion, all these factors that are in management being controlled for the agricultural business. To know all these things, what is required is as productivity, we are going to pick up something called machinery, information and computer, uh, computation uh, that goes on with the productivity aspects and new technology adopt, uh, adoption so that uh, people can understand the reality of how the plant really behaves. So th this is also taken into consideration for productivity. Coming on to yield, uh, what happens is, um, you know, see, there are a lot of things uh, changed in the practices. Implements, intensive farming has started happening. We are expecting original seeds. Pesticides have to be original and not synthetic. Fertilizers cannot be synthetic. So microbiological facilitations and all innovations have started happening for improving the yield along with nanotechnology. Ultimately, what drives anything as a business is, is money. So money from the direct inputs or from the secondary derivatives is being con considered and it is subtracted from the land value or cost or rent or whatever is being spent. And then the business goes on for its real implementation. So this is where we are getting into big data. So big data is not is also camouflaged to a big, uh, a great extent because it is user dependent. Because it's not easy for everyone to do a kind of a analysis of data. Everyone knows the data, but everybody cannot uh, do an analysis. So they have kind of connected a lot of technologies to it. Like you have come, um, mobile computing because of your higher speed internets and you can track your telematics through your GPS, operations, hours, ex, uh, equipment, et cetera. You can increase your production levels, yields, and uh, all your um, you know, uh, aspects that goes on with the management controls. Then the sensors, you know, on the go. As you go, you can pick the data, you, know, you feel it, and you change it. And you go on with the irrigation requirements and all those stuff, along with the new power not on the fossil power, the electric drives and things which are, on to, are being connected, uh, connected to the uh, re requirement of um, uh, you know, the farm, farm requirement. Then the uh, traits through the microbiology has been identified and then we have all the forage uh, in, um, uh, in, I mean, harvesting uh, techniques, then the offload techniques and along with it, the nanotechnology has also come in with uh, considering the waste, biotechnology, pests and nutrients and the hormones, et cetera. See, all this 
are data. If you want to know what is data, everybody has data. So if you want to collate all this data and you keep it in such one place, it is called DW, which is called the data warehousing. If you have a data, what happens is it is vulnerable to be used or it is to be misused. Every time you cannot keep on protecting a data. So what you have to do is you need to take a chunk of a data through a distributed manage, uh, data management system and then do a computing so that you can take some data and you go saving it, identifying what you can use, misuse, and that sometimes it can also be manipulated. We should also know what bad can happen with the data. So the, this, this is also happening. But then comes your engineering, the data engineering, the DE, where you extract, transform, and load this uh, data so that you make a meaningful derivation out of it which is called the data engineering. But there, what you can do, you can either use, man, misuse, manipulate, or even go without being, uh, you know, it can be an archive or a remnant data. So when this kind of a thing happens, then the real aspect of the, uh, the miniaturization or the microview uh, requirement happens through data mining. Data mining is the one where you extract, discover, and reason it with a logic or with a pattern or with an opportunity, or you hack and identify all these data, whether it is a right data, and then use it. This is, this is the right data, which is called as the BD coordinate, a big data coordinate that is being fed into your system for analytics. I'll show you how this data can come. Okay, we have done some kind of an activity uh, or a research for a long time on agriculture. Like, uh, Professor Barbara from Poland, she's also there in the conference, I mean, uh, workshop today, where we have gone through the, uh, you know, working on with agriculture and uh, the ICT or the uh, Industry 4.0 connectivities for a long time. See, these are the nine classifications the agricultural specialists have given through a Delphi technique. They said about access, application, development, and sustainability as one classification. Then they took up the losses, they took up the economical developments, the infrastructure mechanization status, and the land orientations like leveling restoration or whatever cultivating farms you wanted to have. And then the marketing and the yield increase, yield increase on this area and as well as on the plant. These were the nine classifications they took in. And then they said, we need to do out a factorial analysis, finding out the variables. See land use, environmental degradation, massive uh, soil erosion, all these are all variables and below which you have a lot of factors coming in. Like this, when we identified, we found out, I, I'm just uh, scanning through because otherwise uh, reading through these data will be of no use to you unless you are going to use it. So we found out like, you know, the classification is around nine, variables is around 19, and the factors is around 164, which is nothing but a 192 com computational opportunity. This again, if you want to use it with the uh, permutation and combination, you can't do a matrix table or you can't bring in any kind of uh, a Bayesian or um, in a Fourier series to go on with this kind of uh, control limits. You need to, it's a big, big, vast data. But when you want to get this, what you have to do is a large scale data processing. These things will be handled very good by uh, the subsequent um, you know, speaker, uh, Shravan, where you will see a lot of uh, large scale data processing happening. It will be on a log web or a, uh, in a crawl stream analysis. And then they will have a lot of data on the text or image processing, including the market analysis and the archiving data that goes on with this uh, process. See here, what happens is the hive is the one which is more important in a big data. Hive is nothing but you accelerate certain things, you query certain things, and you index certain things because this is a RDBMS. Relational data um, 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 uh, based management system. What you have to do is when you have to accelerate and query an in, uh, index, you should know what you have to do, whether you have to compile or you have to compress the data. And then when you store it, whether you store the data as such or you store it in an algorithm, because that's a processing that happens with the data. Data as such does not give you information. Only when you process and use it, you know. So, what kind of algorithm it will get? And the query part is be, you transact with a user defined function of data mining and then or with a metadata embedment. Why it is called a metadata embedment, embedment uh, thing is like you don't see the data as a data, you see as a picture, a big picture. So uh, this uh, process, process of big data, what happens is it is 
protecting your data in a safe way, but, but it goes inside you and does it. Now coming on the technical aspects of big data. These are the three uh, prominent uh, softwares being uh, used and people who are willing to uh, you know, get your career towards this big data, you need to know about any of this and pick it and uh, choose it and develop on it. MongoDB is your database. That is an application-based database. It's, it's, it, you, know, you, you can fit it to any of your operation systems. This platform, MongoDB, is uh, one which is very easy to be used as a FTP or even as your URL. You can pick it and place it in any of the operating system and even use it. Whereas Hadoop, Hadoop is your software, which is the one which will check how much to use, what to use and do it. And Scoop is your connector. See, this um, data, Taking on to the Hadoop. Hadoop, I said, uh, it's a uh, distributed um, you know, uh, information system. But what it does, it, it interfaces with your SQL. Your sequential uh, learning happens only when you link all your databases to the hardwares. And then you have a lot of libraries connected to it. And the system does also connect it to, uh, to a resource scheduling and data processing happens. Whereas Scoop, you know, Scoop, Scoop does the import of the data transfers it to your external uh, requirements, and then does the analysis. Coming down, you, you go on with the MongoDB. MongoDB is a language converter. Like you have a lot of data in NLP and in other formats, whatever formats it is, what you do, you, you do a data modeling or you do a replication of it because many activities get repelled, I mean, repetitive in a process. So you need to know like what happens, uh, should be taken for repetition or uh, on a one go aspect and then connect it with your uh, Java. JavaScript annotations are being connected to your uh, hardwares and machines, and the st storage just goes on with your pipelines, your ETL pipelines, your extract, transform, and the loading pipelines, so that the users can do a predefined kind of a requirement of what they have to do it. So coming down, you see this distributed file system, in short, has a data contribution, it has a data storage, and then a name node uh, uh, trust tran uh, transfer tracker. What happens is when you have a name node, what happens is a single point storage happens. So here, the system doesn't go into the nuances of what you have given, but it takes a snapshot and chases across where this kind of a uh, you know, snapshot occurs. So that this is a safe thing without affecting your safety of your data. And uh, you know, all the things can be mounted on your URL or your FTP. And then the resource um, uh, scheduling takes care of your queuing, whatever comes first is being. It doesn't go only with your legacy data and show you what happened past. What happens now can be checked out with the reality. Many of these things will be covered, I hope, by uh, Shravan when he uh, takes care of your, uh, you know, his uh, ERP uh, implementation of the big data, right? For now, let me park myself. If you have any queries, please ask. Else, we'll pull, uh, push these questions to, to, the, to the last. Over to you, participants. If you hear nothing, uh, Igor, can we uh, share from you? Can you take up? Any questions, uh, Dr. Annie? Yeah. Yeah, Kavita. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, you have very well explained how uh, a technology will use into agriculture field. It really it's good to hear. But mm. what would be the implementation cost, sir? Is it uh, affordable by the farmer or it will be supported by a government? What would no, be your uh, suggestion to implement let, let, sir? let me tell you frankly, we are not talking anything for uh, helping a farmer. This is a business. Okay, sir. This is a business farmers can never get into, and this is corporatized. Let's go with the reality only with people who can invest on a uh, ERP system and who can go in with a lot of processing. See, they need to hire a consultant who can be a functional input uh, guy, and a technical uh, team will work, and there'll be a big organizations which will be running around it. That is the reality. Okay, fine, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Igor? 
any questions you can ask me as people. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Krishna. I'm here. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will start uh, immediately because uh, we don't have a lot of time. Uh, and I have a lot of to do and a lot of to, to speak. So just a moment. Uh, yeah, Dr. Igor is from uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina. So let's uh, hear from him. Thank you. Uh, can you? Uh, yeah, can I can you see, see my my, yes. my screen. Yes, yes. Yes, here. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's start to speak about uh, IoT architecture and five G technology as support uh, for IoT. In the first place. Uh, We'll speak about 5G mobile networks as a main support for, for IoTs. Then I will give you the main definitions uh, of IoT, briefly said something, uh, say something about IoT systems and IoT architecture. Uh, at the first place, uh, it's important to know that uh, standardization and commercialization of mobile networks, 5G mobile networks, it's uh, crucial for uh, massive implementation of IoT. And it's, it's also important for IoT's uh, so-called smartphone society. It's a term introduced by, uh, by Roland Berger uh, experts. And also, we all have to do a so-called shift in mindset. It's a term introduced by Ericsson. So what, what does it mean uh, shift in mindset? At this moment, customers uh, buy tariff models of uh, their mobile operators, uh, which includes uh, uh, minutes, SMSs, data traffic, et cetera, et cetera. And in very near future, the user, the user will buy internet access speed and the usage of uh, different applications. This is very important for IoTs. This is very important also for, for smart agriculture that I'll speak a little bit later. So what is important for 5G network as, as support for, uh, for IoTs? On the first place, peak transmission rate greater than uh, 10 gigabits per second, uh, 100 times more connected devices than present situation in present mobile networks. It's, uh, it's uh, important because of IoTs. Uh, today we speak only about uh, customers, uh, uh, people as customers. In very near future, we speak about uh, devices and people as our customers. Mass production and availability, uh, sensors and different devices, longer service life of batteries in devices. Uh, it's also important uh, to speed access uh, at least 100 megabits per second wherever it's needed. Uh, transferring more than 10,000 10, times uh, data than now. Delay less uh, than one millisecond. It's important for some special services such, such as industrial internet of things or, or self-driving cars high reliability of the system in, and almost, almost 100 signal coverage of the population and the territory. This, this picture just shows uh, what, what I just said. So we have three, uh, three segments, unlimited experience uh, for everything and instant actions and uh, instant, instant action and sub segments or, or items in these, in these segments. When we speak about uh, 5G mobile network and uh, IoTs, I always like to compare it with a railway composition. So if we have a railway composition and if, if we compare it with uh, these new technologies in, um, in Industry 4.0 era, uh, it's important to understand that a railway embankment are equal to, is equal to fiber optic infrastructure. Rails are transmission technologies. Locomotive is 5G mobile network and wagons are different IoT applications, uh, OTT services, cloud services, anything as a services. So when you speak about, and of course, driver is uh, artificial intelligence. When you speak about wagons, uh, one of the uh, most important uh, wagon is, is uh, IoTs and, and their applica uh, applications in uh, smart agriculture. <clears throat> Mission of, uh, of uh, uh, of uh, IoTs. So what is Internet of Things? It's an uh, object access through the internet uh, network containing video technology to interact with states and external environment. This is explanation of uh, industrial Internet of Things. Uh, it's more complex, but uh, we will see later when I, when I show you uh, IoT systems and IoT architecture, you, you will see why uh, this, this definition is more complex than uh, in, uh, 
uh, definition of IoTs. People from Cisco introduced the uh, term the Internet of Everything. It's similar like IoTs, but uh, it brings together people, processes, data, and things. So when we compare Internet of Everything and Internet of Things, uh, Internet of Things uh, builds on foundation of Internet of uh, Things, adding network intelligence that all uh, convergence uh, and orchestration across previously uh, disparate systems. So Internet of Everything uh, is a much more complex definition and much more uh, means more than uh, just the Internet of Things. <clears throat> One of the most important uh, thing for, uh, for Internet of Things is IPv6 addressing. Uh, why is it so important? It's important because uh, each uh, uh, sensor, each uh, thing connected to the Internet has to have uh, their own, uh, its, its own IP address. It's uh, necessary to urgently work on this implementation. And this is a very, very simple explanation. If we have IPv6 addressing, we can have 3.5 times 10 to 38 addresses. And today we have only 4.3 times 10 to 9 or 4.3 billion addresses. If we compare these two numbers, and if you know the fact that, uh, that each uh, device connected on the internet has to have its own uh, uh, IP address, it's very clear that we need as soon as possible IPv6 uh, addressing. The main definition of, uh, and the effects of IoT, uh, this, is, uh, this is picture who, which, which shows uh, wagons in these, in these uh, railway compositions. So we have a lot of different uh, segments, uh, some uh, home automation, cities, Sorry, uh, Igor, government, energy. Igor, your, your slides are not moving. Slide? Your slide is not moving. We are still in the same slide called a smart uh, agriculture as but one I'm of the most important IoT business area. But I'm I'm uh, I'm, yeah. I'm listening. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can refresh. Can Can you see my slide now? Yeah. No. We so just uh, uh, just the title. Uh, the same thing. title only. Yes. Right. I don't know why. I will try. Again. Maybe. Uh, maybe. I will. Maybe. I, will I will try again. I will try again. Yeah, I don't yeah. know try, why. Try. Just a moment. Can you see it now? Yes. J just can you move down to the next slide so that we can see the transition and then you start? Yeah, it is happening. Is it, Very good. Is it fine now? No, no, it's fine. Okay, you can see it now. Yes. So this, uh, okay, I, I, will, I will show you all, all of these uh, slides uh, briefly. Uh, I just, uh, I just uh, spoke about these these uh, segments in 5G in IoTs, both wagons, and now uh, I'm on uh -huh. this slide. So can you uh -huh. see this? Mm -hmm. The main business segments of IoTs, IoT applications. Uh -huh. Can you see this, Krishna? No, yes, okay, yes, no. yes. Uh, okay, no. okay, okay. So uh, the main uh, IoT applications business segments are in uh, uh, home automation, city, uh, smart, uh, smart homes, smart cities, energy, government, and of course you can see here smart agriculture as one of the most important uh, business segments in in IoT for IoT uh, applications and segments. Uh, what is uh, the, uh, the most important in this new era, uh, era Industry 4.0 era, is uh, uh, the, that we all uh, have to be creative and that creativity will bring us to the creation of new products and services. So uh, it's important that we all uh, need to uh, be imaginative and creative and design new products and services and applications. Uh, I always like to uh, cite um, uh, Steve Jobs, who said people uh, uh, some people say give uh, give customers what they want, but that's not my approach. Uh, I'll figure out uh, what they are going to do before before uh, they do. I think Henry Ford once said, "If I ask my customers what they want, uh, they uh, they would probably told me a better horse." But people don't know what they want until you show it to them. 
That's why I never rely on market research. Our task is to read things uh, that are not yet on the page. This last, uh, this, uh, this, this last uh, sentence is very important. Our task is to read things that are not yet on the page. So when we speak about uh, when we speak about uh, uh, IoT systems, there are four key challenges to be addressed before mass deployment and introduce, uh, introduction of IoT approach. We need to ha uh, have uh, one or several uh, several uh, 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 platforms for IoT, uh, connecting of devices, business models, and applications. Uh, those will lead to massive use of Internet of Things or Internet of Everything, so-called killer applications. There are five factors involved in the chain of defining and ensuring the security of access devices connected to Internet or the data that they exchange among uh, themselves and send to the people. On the first place, providers of IoT platform services. Then manufacturers of IoT devices, so-called IoT device vendors. Network. Uh, mobile telecom operators, uh, companies or individuals responsible for the development of the IoT applications and IoT service providers. On the picture, uh, it's, it's, uh, this picture shows uh, what, what I just said. Uh, for all of us uh, is- uh, Igor, again, uh, again, the picture is not seen. Sorry? Picture is not seen. We are still seeing basic facts of IoT architecture. I don't know why. I, I, I'm just listing this. I, I don't know what, what is the problem. I Maybe you, you shift uh, your uh, cursor ah, there. You move down there and show us. Yeah, now it's okay. Yeah. I will try with, with uh, I will try yeah, with, no. with, uh, with PDF. You know, can you, no, see? You can see, yes. Now, you can see? Okay, yes. uh, IoT systems. Uh, so this is this is a uh, this is a uh, important uh, thing that I just said. Can you see this picture now? Um, we can see IoT applications, applications, and around uh, several cycles. No, 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 no. I, I don't know. You have I to have you some... have to uh, no. move slice by slice on the your right side. Yeah, but I I I'm, I'm listing it, but I don't know what what is the problem. I will try again. Can you see it now? Okay. Yeah. You, uh, and, um, uh, Igor, you keep your cursor on the thumbnail. You don't get into, you don't move your cursor to the main screen. Ah, you keep it on your thumbnail. Yes, it, it's it's on the main. Uh, can you see uh, the picture? Aim GSM GSMI security guidelines. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is. Uh, I, I will. I will uh, keep going. So if 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 you have any problems, just just uh, tell me. So this is the the most important uh, picture for uh, understanding IoT systems. Uh, we have IoT service platform providers, we have network operators, IoT uh, device vendors, of course, IoT uh, service providers and application developers. So if you have any, any idea of your business startup in smart agriculture, you will find yourself in uh, this, uh, the fifth segment, IoT applications developers. Uh, can you see this, this uh, slide, IoT architecture? Yes, yes. Okay. So there are three main layers in in this architecture, uh, physical transport and application layer. And uh, this picture shown that uh, physical transportation and application layer. When we speak about uh, internet, uh, industrial internet of the architecture, we have these four layers, physical layer, the thing layer, uh, transport layer, middleware layer and application layer. And this picture, can you see this picture, industrial internet of things architecture? Yes, this picture shows these 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 four four layers. So uh, I lost I lost some some time. Yes, I have information. My internet connection is unstable. It's problem. It's uh, probably some problem. But uh, this I internet industrial inter internet of architecture uh, shows these these four layers. When we speak about uh, main areas of implementation for IoT systems, uh, smart agriculture is uh, among uh, top five. Of top five uh, 
business segments. And uh, we'll speak later, we'll speak now about smart, smart agriculture as one of the most important IoT business area. Uh, when we speak about uh, Internet of Things in uh, IoT in agriculture, uh, there are three main drivers, climate changes, need for water conservation, and emphasis or, and on enhancing efficiency. Climate changes, it will be needed to stimulate the deployment of IoT-based solutions in agriculture to, uh, to increase yield and improve efficiency. So if you have your some ideas uh, for business startup in a smart agriculture, think about uh, these two important uh, things. Uh, when you speak about water conversations, agriculture consumes nearly 70% of fresh water and application, applications such as smart irrigation system will help to save water in agricultural applications. Think about it when you, when you think about some of your business startup or if you have your, or your own ideas about uh, smart agriculture. Uh, leveraging uh, IoT for water conservation will be in major trends in the future of agriculture. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, emphasis on enhancing efficiency, so it's uh, it's a target to minimize costs and the efforts associ associated with agricultural activities and some other other things. I, I will I will uh, start uh, uh, speak uh, quickly because of uh, because I lost uh, some time because of because of these problems with my my slides. There are four main restrictions: fragmented agricultural market, lack of connecting services. Uh, for the agricultural market, high capital investment requirement, and data management for agricultural decision making. Uh, fragmented agricultural market. The main problem is agricultural market consists of uh, many small markets and segments, and it's a special problem in a special problem in, in a developing optimizing return of investment uh, in this business segment. When we speak about lack of connectivity, connect maturity levels such as in the smart city or smart smart medicine, and the telecom operators must recognize uh, this uh, this problem, such as also also small local local network uh, network providers. When you speak about high capital investment, uh, it's needed a significant initial. It's problem especially also for farmers in developing countries because uh, uh, there is a really high initial investment, but uh, return on investment will be will be uh, safe in in several in several years. But this this uh, initial investment is really problem for especially for for small farmers in in developing countries. Data management, uh, one considerable barrier in the efficient use of data is the lack of industrial standards of data uh, management applications in smart agriculture based solutions. But uh, opportunities, opportunities are most, uh, more important for us. So expansion of smartphone and internet penetration, increasing public private partnership, increasing adoption of technologies. Uh, when we speak about expansion for smartphones, uh, many, many companies, big companies uh, have to find their own uh, business opportunities. Uh, on the first place, mobile telecom operators, then service providers, application developers, solution providers, device manufacturers, etc. When you speak about increasing uh, public-private partnership, it, it's huge chance for some countries, states, counties, different investors, different financial institutions, agricultural development authorities, food and beverage manufacturers. Increasing adoption of technologies is important for telecom operators too. Uh, again, telecom operators, uh, service providers, device manufacturers, etc. So there are many opportunities for many, uh, many uh, established and uh, big companies to find themselves in this, this business segment. When you speak about uh, value chain, this is a value, main value chain for uh, smart agriculture. Uh, small companies, startups, uh, have to find themselves in applications, uh, pro application providers. It's the fifth uh, fifth uh, uh, box, but also many other companies, established companies, huge international companies, uh, can find their their business interests and opportunities in this in this uh, business uh, segment. So uh, <clears throat> this is the value chain explained. From, from a company's uh, point of view. And uh, this is uh, an, uh, one, another approach. 
Uh, here we can see the main uh, business segments in smart agriculture. There are five five segments: climate, stock, plant, soil, water, and many many items in this uh, main. Uh, this is a picture which show uh, which shows. Um, this is picture we show we show uh, business opportunities and some uh, data for uh, from Europe uh, smart agriculture, and this uh, two picture shows uh, how uh, how will uh, smart agriculture will will be developed in the following years from product then smart product smart connected product uh, product system and uh, at the end system of systems and we are going to this the, the fifth. Uh, uh, the fifth uh, box system of systems. Uh, this uh, picture also show, uh, shows uh, the main the main okay. segments. Can you can you see my uh, my slides? Can you see yeah. my slides? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, IT applications and solutions in agriculture. So here here is shown uh, four main uh, segments and many items in these uh, in these uh, business segments. Uh, before conclusion, I will send, uh, I will give you some inputs about uh, potential potential uh, business opportunities. If you have uh, have uh, have some ideas for business startups or etc. Precision farming. Precision farming is an approach for farm management that use IoT and information and communicate uh, technologies to optimize returns and ensure preservation of resources. Then variable rate technology (VRT) refers to any technology which enables producers. To vary the rate of uh, crop, uh, crop uh, inputs. Smart irrigation it was, is uh, one of the most important uh, items in smart agriculture. Uh, the need to enhance the efficiency of irrigation process and minim uh, minimize water losses in this rise. It's, it's important for all of us, especially for some countries and some regions in uh, on the on the earth. Then agricultural drones. Uh, Krishnan mentioned. These technologies, uh, this technology, and it's very important for small farmers, but especially for big farms and uh, uh, big companies, uh, which uh, will implement uh, smart agriculture in their business processes. Smart greenhouse, of course, for uh, for all of us. Smart greenhouse allows farmers to cultivate crops with minimal human intervention. So uh, this is also a great idea for all of us to think about. Uh, uh, to think about the business segment for in uh, smart agriculture, then yield monitoring. Yield monitoring is the mechanism to monitor various uh, aspects uh, corresponding to agricultural yield, such as uh, uh, grain mass flow, uh, moisture content, uh, and total quality of uh, harvested grain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, farm uh, management system (FMS) assists farmers uh, to any stakeholders with information collection and uh, management uh, by leveraging uh, diverse sensors and tracking devices. Uh, soil uh, monitoring systems, such systems can assist farmers in tracking and imp improving the quality of soil to avoid degradation. Uh, also important for all, all farmers in uh, small and uh, big ones. Uh, precision livestock farming. Uh, precision livestock farming supports real-time monitoring of production, health, and welfare of livestock to ensuring optimal yield. It's uh, also important when when you speak when we uh, speak about uh, business opportunities in smart agriculture. At the end, uh, smart farms is a future of agriculture business segment. I uh, ha uh, had some survey on uh, LinkedIn, and I found that people think that uh, in this year, smart cities and uh, smart healthcare will be uh, in front of smart agriculture. But <clears throat> believe me, in the following uh, two, three, or four years, let's say uh, uh, in, in uh, 2025, smart agriculture will be as the most uh, as important as smart cities or smart homes or smart agriculture. IoT and relevant technologies will be a crucial part of such farms. I, I explained uh, before uh, railway compositions, 5G as a locomotive and IoT as uh, wagons of that. Uh, uh, of that uh, railway composition. And smart agriculture is one of the top five business segments now, and it will be maybe in top uh, two or three in uh, two, four, or, or five years. Uh, mobile operators, system integrators, application developers, uh, countries, states, uh, counties uh, have to find their, their bus uh, business, uh, business opportunities and uh, try to invest uh, as soon as possible 
some some uh, financial inputs to develop uh, new new uh, services and applications for for uh, smart agriculture creativity creativity from all of these companies and all of us uh, is uh, uh, or, or is, is the, the most important approach in this industry 40 era and the goal is to achieve win 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 situation win situation for mobile operators win situations for countries counties win situation for uh, smart applica application developers and of course win situation for for farmers small and big ones thank you and uh, i apologize for problems that i have with my with my slides hey, thank you uh, igor um, participants, if you have any questions, please raise it. Okay, if you don't have, then we go to the next speaker. Uh, thank you once again, and I really apologize for, for, for slides. I, I, uh, I had uh, some unstable connections, and, uh, and I do hope uh, next time it will be better. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Shravan, are you ready? Who is next speaker? Shravan, Shravan. Okay. Shravan Kumar Gupta. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Ah, can, can you increase your volume, uh, Shravan? No, is it okay? Yeah, better. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And today I'm going to talk about the importance of SAP applications. So uh, I would like to share my screen. Just hold on, please. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Once again, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the especially application towards ERP SAP using big data. And as you know, right today, uh, big data plays a vital role in the field of all domain. There's no ending for big data. So today, and nowadays, you know, uh, people want to do a smart business, a smart work using ERP. There's no alternative solutions. So that is what I'm going to hear to show some practical things, which you can bring you some uh, ease, feel ease and feel smart, how we can use ERP in our life. Not only in our life, we can support to other people who can adopt this technology to make a business, to make a life, to make a uh, like a societal need to get more profit with less of it. So <clears throat> today I'm going to talk about what introduction of ERP, SAP. And also I'll talk about why do we need SAP? There are many product in the market, right? So people can say how, right? Why you are telling SAP I need to adopt, right? E either for societal needs, either for company growth or personal growth, whatever. And I'll talk about the, what are the models under SAP? And then I'll talk about evolution of big data and why do you want to adopt the SAP big data? And I'll show something like how big data and the SAP will work out. Right? Then I'll discuss about conclusion. Now, 
Everything is visible. Everything is visible. Yeah, yeah, visible, visible. Okay. Malaki, please mute. Now, people say like ERP. ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Plan. If people ask what is the enterprise, and everyone knows enterprise, right? Enterprise means a group of companies or organizations or departments which can work together to get more information on time to time and day by day. Right? That is called enterprise. As you know, whenever we set up a company or any organization or department, there are some resources are required, like manpower, machinery, marketing, method, right? Method, as you know, right, technology, right? and material, those are the resources are required. When people are asking here, one minute, please. Uh, Malati, can you mute yourself? Like, let us talk about. Let us talk about what is a planning. Planning, right? Planning. It is used to optimize all the resources to get more profit. Now, the way recently, right? Two speaker talk about right, right? Big data and IoT. It's a wonderful. They have given insight. That's what here, they, this planning is a very important. It is used to optimize all the resources to get more profit with less of it, right? Now, now, if people ask how we can define ERP, ERP is an enterprise wide information which can coordinate all the resources, information activities needed to develop any BG, EG solution manner, which can bring in such a way. Let us talk about this footprint. That whenever you are talking about agriculture pattern, so we need to maintain this, right? See here, this is an enterprise, right? Financial management, resource, right? Compliance, property management, product, project management, product management, quality management, assess and maintenance management, and production and plant maintenance, and sales for automation and so many. Right here, this is enterprise, this is the customer, and this is supplier. As you know, right, as I told you, a group of companies or organization or department which can work together to get more information on time to time and day by day, right? Now, let us have a look how it works. I'm giving one minute to understand what is going on. As you know, right, this is a customer view and this is how ERP works internally, right? Just have a look for one minute, then you can understand, you know, like everyone is about uh, using a smartphone, right? But people don't know what are the application they are using. They know how to use it, but they don't know how internal process is happening, right? And nowadays, everyone uh, working with the right, uh, they are using everyone WhatsApp, right? They are using Facebook, Twitter, many things they are using, LinkedIn. But they don't know how the uh, all companies they are giving wonderful features to, to use of you just Right? So think logically here, if you see in background process, every component, every device is working continuously without any delay. So this is what, this is work, you know, this is how it works. And this is customer in customer view, nothing. Just use and throw, that's it. But as a developer side, as a R&D side, as a right innovation side, it happens 24 by seven and year and year until end of the people innovation, right? This is how it's going to work out. 
now now let us talk right when 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 people are talking about right uh in the terms of agriculture i'm talking as you know right once upon a time we used to get seasonal fruits and vegetables but today's world and today's date everyone is getting all fruits all vegetables can you imagine so technology are bringing the right solutions and as you know right today we are using automations previously we are using science engineering technology now we are using automations and that's what automation comes under industry 4.0 so this is industry 4.0 is working together okay now i'll move uh, ahead the next slide now now people if they ask what is the sap sap stand for systems application product in data processing as you know right sap is the sap was developed by 5x ibm employee in 1972 in world of germany everyone knows right and this is a third largest software company in the world as well as this this call it as sap ag you can call it agrotrade gamba okay the sap software we have the first started sap software sap r by 2 that works based on mainframe version and now next right later on came r by 2 what does mean by r by 2 real r by 3 sorry r by 3 real time three tier architecture which can work on based on client and server architecture and now later on came ecc enterprise central component and now we, we have also sap my sap erp so that is for like used for especially uh, a small level company i'll talk in all those thing later on now sap hana this is a beautiful word and beautiful information i can talk sap hana is the latest right in the memory database and platform which can be deployed on premises or cloud it is a combination of hardware and software which integrates different component like sap hana database and sap slt system landscape transformation and sap is a capable of i'm talk about this one hana sap hana is a capable of processing a large amount of real time data can you imagine and as you know people say what many people why they don't want to know many things about sap because sap is not free software this is not open software that is reason many people are not able to use it they want they don't want to have test it you got to mind so <clears throat> i'll tell you some example to you see so i come to are able to see my yes this screen yes you know now this most of the companies are very clever you know they want to grow in the society as well as in global needs so they are asking to sap and they are not disclosing now let us talk about amazon see amazon and they are using sap people talk about amazon cloud and all but i tell you all companies they are using sap but they never disclose i show you here sap on aws observe here what is one hello are able to see yes yes sap on aws the can you imagine even though any company in the world they are using sap but they never disclose from where they are getting services from there getting the solutions sap is only the provider 
Now I'll talk about the model. SAP farming management is there. Sorry, uh, sir, I could not share the PPT that one. I'll share in that one as well. No, no problem. See here, SAP form management and grower management. If you talk about this SAP, see here, it, it especially this, this is a target audience for agriculture companies, which can grow, grow the food and crops. And the consumer project, product companies, right? Which can maintain, right? Consumer good processes, right? Food processes, feed processes, and beverage processes, and tobacco companies. And these are other companies. See here. These are, that, that's what today, all farmers are in dilemma, right? Labor resources, as you know, right? Today's date, today's date, no one wants to do farming, frankly speaking. Suppose that in this world, everyone wants to become richer, but they don't want to do laboring job. Even the, when I was in Germany, right? If I say I'm a software engineer, I'm a uh, like a informatic engineer. We call it as in German, Deutschland, right? In Deutsch, in, uh, it's been I'm a in, informatic engineer. So people used to give uh, appreciate like anything. But when the people are, I'm a labor, right? Or is something, it happens. Now, land liability, weather events, right? See how the weather is changing. Can you imagine? Everywhere is a problem with the weather. We cannot predict. With SAP, we can predict. I can give the guarantee that one. And this is a fertilizer and pesticides and machine and equipment and plant capabilities and seeds and planting material. Now, one minute. No, this, 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 you can have a look how agribusiness solution works based on SAP S4 HANA industry, industry enhancement. See here, this is a SAP farm management and SAP grow management. This is a for farmer, this is for buyers. Can you imagine plant, 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 grow and harvest? In the terms of farmer, in terms of buyer, support, package, and pay. See, see here, we provide the SAP farm management and for grow management, we can provide SAP grower management. We integrate together, then it works. I, I'll show the practically, don't worry. Now here, we have get, taken some background on crop production cycle, right? This is a short term, medium term, and long term. See here, and then we have some form management applications. We have field planning, then crop in life cycle management, harvest management, sorry, I'll maximize this one, and mobile access and management analysis and reporting. Nowadays, today's world, reporting and analyzing the data is very important to everyone, either in terms of farmer or in terms of manage, uh, or SAP grower management. That one point. Now I'll come this point. Now here I'll, I'll, I'll design this data to you. I'll show you this one, how it works. Okay. Now let me show my ex, uh, the first slide. Now you can got one point, SAP HANA. I just told you SAP HANA. HANA means high performance analytic appliance. You got a point, high performance analytic appliance. So this is the latest from SAP. It, it was found in 2004 itself. Now, next. As you know, right, SAP is a third largest software company in the world. And SAP is the worldwide ERP leader in the market, right? SAP having more than 5,000 
customers, no, not 5,000, more than 5 lakhs customers worldwide. Sorry, this is a, I would like to update, right? This is all about SAP. And now I'll talk about, right? Why do we need SAP? This is very, very important, right? Today's date, right? People say, sir, may, there are many ERP products there, like Oracle application, Ban, Rampo, Sibel, CRM. And also we have, right, Microsoft Navision, Accepta, right? So these are the ERP, but why we say, because as you know, right, SAP has provided real-time information. What does it mean by real-time information? In SAP, we have, there are 17,000 predefined database table. 17,000 predefined database table and 11,000 predefined applications and many more standard reports. No need to design the table, a database from the scratch. If required, we can create, but I'll show you how to design all those things, right? Now I'll show you, like orally telling is not feeling good, but I'll show you. I'll, I'll cancel this one, then I'll show one by one. Uh, everyone seeing my screen of SAP? Yeah, yeah. It's very important. I'll show you from the scratch, then it, people will feel better. Otherwise, it will be in confusion. Now, see here, this is a SAP logon, right? I'm clicking on that. So, this is a logon screen and click on logon, right? We have to provide client, user, and password. And also, I told you, I'm giving my Credentials here. By default, language English. See here. Now, I told you SAP is having real time information according to this slide. Right? So, how I can build real time? Tell me. I'm talking about, right, material, right? I need to create material, see here. Material number, we can see, plant and all, right? And I want to change the material, MM02, right? And then I want to display the material. These are the meaningful data given by SAP, right? MM03, right? See here. So we can have details here, clear? Now, another way I can say, suppose that manpower has been maintained by human resource, right? So see here, PA30 is applications, right? See here, data is there or not? If you work in a firm, right, agriculture firm, they will maintain data like this or not? So they have to maintain the data. So day by day, MNC companies also having big data, right? Now, my question is that, how I can believe SAP is having real information? Whatever you are seeing this screen as an application, wherever you go in SAP already inbuilt is there, already designed. No need to design from the scratch. If you want to design from the scratch, you can reuse, misuse, but bring me breaking news, right? There's an option is there. I'll show you those things. Let's talk example about, right? 
SC eleven is a key code for maintaining the data. So PA triple zero one. PA triple zero one. I'm clicking on display, right? So HR master record is there or not, right? So if you want to change, if you want to make copy, you can make copy within a time. No need to worry, right? Copy. See here. You can make check P triple zero one and info and click on that and putting that this package name and click on here save. Okay, doesn't exit. Okay, I'll save in not packets. I'll save in local object. I don't remember the packets in my right. See here. Coming or not? A fraction of time I have copied around 60 fields. Is there or not? Are you able to see? And now I can show you this one. SC16N is right. PA. Triple zero one, it will come. See here, is there or not? Client, personal number, subtype, object ID, lock indicator, end date, start date, ID record, change on, change by. See here, are able to see? So we can also download in HTML format. See here. I'm coming, I'll, I'll explain one by one. It's not a problem at all, right? HR data. HR data. Now you can have a look on my... This screen is... Hiding me my things wait a minute. No, it's okay. See here. Where I said. Char data. Okay, let me save once again. Here. Save it. It's good. Save it. Still a download. Uh, it's there. Here. Copy. It's coming or not? See, these are the data or not? Observe here. These are the data, junk of data. But this is not junk of data. This is the real data from SAP. Are able to see, guys? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yes. <clears throat> now I can show you. This is one example of related to data. You know, SC11 is there. SYST is there, not, not SYST, DD02 here, where we can find all SAP tables. See here, SAP tables, are able to see? And SAP tables, we can range the right. I need a related to customer to vendor. So all ranging from K to L, it will display all the table details. These are the table names. Table name. So that's the region I can talk. SAP is having real time information. Even though in terms of database, in terms of uh, reporting, in terms of application, everything is there. No need to build from the scratch. If required, which is not available, you know, right? There's no uh, limit for innovation, right? If required, we can do. Let us talk about innovation. Innovation is the process of identifying the individual need or societal need, right? 
to bring in a commercial product right so now this is a very good question is a tightly integrated now tell me today's world sap has been integrated with every technology and every organization and every domain let us talk about what is the technology and domain as you know right today's world who are knowing java who are knowing agricultural skills who are knowing right management who are knowing right automobile they can work together even though I i'll show you here let us talk about this is a technical module right abap right advanced business application programming oops abap and cross application web design pro abap web design pro java bsp hr abap basis sap security right crm technical netweaver uh, portal integration ex exchange infrastructure enterprise portal web based application server grc right this is related to security right and sap mobile now if you talk about right assumption module we have a finance accounting controlling ss management sales distribution material management production planning quality management production planning right project system plant maintenance and human resources i am talking about this is the ecc system when we come for the right uh, hana well hana right hana i told you right high performance analytic appliance where we can get new dimensions modules so here techno function model business warehouse bi business intelligence business object and hana hana comes under i i tell you just i'm typing here see hana is very unique i can say high performance high <clears throat> high performance and a little plans now i can say sap hana is the latest in memory database and platform which can be deployed on premises or cloud it is a combination of hardware and software which integrate different component like sap hana database and sap slt system landscape transformation and hana is a capable of processing a large amount of real time data that's the reason i told you here real time information and tightly integrated right now i can i cannot uh, i can share on the video after the, my two video i am going to share uh, should i play the video sir yeah yeah you you can quickly complete i have to implement sir then people can understand okay okay yeah Uh, we are not hearing any vo uh, vo voice. Okay. Is it only a visual? Ah. No, 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 no. Voice is there, sir. 
uh, sir should i send you this pay yeah yeah you can send me this i can forward them uh, yeah, be better. yeah 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 uh, end of the program we can forward these two videos no if you you, if you play this one then people can understand you, you know they have to listen for three minutes videos that not, not more okay. than that okay i'm sharing you this one uh, how are you sharing through my i'm sharing by mail uh, you know i cannot uh, reduce my uh, screen size because i am recording then how i can send to you sir and no, you you can send it i will forward them later maybe you try if it is not working we'll forward them later okay just wait i'm right. trying okay Shravan, you can send this later. No issues. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me your email address, sir. Ah, Krishnan dot Umachandra. Maybe you may not have it here. Yeah. Can, can, uh, thing is, like you know, we we can handle this later. We we can handle this transaction later. You you complete your uh, presentation. Actually, this is people can get the exact uh, the meaning. Of yeah, that is right. But uh, already another speaker is also online. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then I'm coming to right. I'll share this one, right? Yeah. Now. As you know, right, tight integration means right. It it will be integrate with any system, either Java system or cloud system, any system. There's no. We don't have any kind of minor problem at all, and we have a, a, in SAP hundred plus modules, and also we can have, we can work with the more than one hundred twenty languages. You know, just now I was connecting here. Observe here, it's coming by default English, right? I want to work with the different language. See here, I want to log in. So the same log on, we can change the language. It will become in different languages. Like I'm going to log on in German. I'm putting here German miss DE, Deutsch. Right? So it's coming here. Just have a look. Yeah, yeah. license information via Merrill Fox on Meldum, right? G Conan, right? So I'm selecting third one. See, it's coming right. Financial Service Network Connector Bureau on Meldum, Veracruz Founder, Compatible Meldum, right? Or logistic, right? There's no Lesson, right? So we can also here, we can also work with 120 languages. What does it mean by verticals? SAP support with 80 plus verticals. SAP has been adopted by different, different organizations. I can talk about oil and gas, automobile, pharma company, right? Food and beverage. Uh, a higher education, the tech, information technology, many way, right? I can show you here. The, then, then you can understand. Just observe here. We have this eighty plus verticals. We have banking, insurance, manufacturing, media. Utilities, retail, these are the right. We have industry specific and strength vertical capabilities and build world class services. So it's not only, even though the way this region, we also SAP came in the agricultural field, right? That is called SAP farming and SAP grower management. So that's region SAP has been adopted by more than 80 plus verticals. 
Now, if we talk about this one, next I would like to come. No, uh, uh, Shravan, yeah. we are already running out of time. Can we okay. uh, you know, uh, close and we'll take your uh, session in the later advanced levels because this is going uh, more time. Okay, okay, okay. actually uh -huh. I wanted to implement this like system. Uh -huh. You know, no problem, do one thing. Uh -huh. uh, next time, I I'll- Yeah, next uh, time we'll have it a separate session for you. Then yes, you will yes. have more time with us. That, that's what, right? that's what. I, I wanted to give demo and all how it works, but it takes time again, right? Half an hour, yeah, one yeah. hour requirement for me. No, so only 15 minutes, minutes for each speaker, yeah. Uh, I have for uh, uh, 10 minutes, it will take maintain data. No, 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 you close it. We will okay. take it next time with you. Okay. Because no uh, enough, enough of an uh, you know, awareness created. Okay. 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 Uh, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, you. Sorry for abra I mean, abruptly stopping you. I know you are uh, affected with uh, co uh, COVID-19. Uh, In spite of that, you have taken enough time. Uh, very nice of you. Uh, instead of going with questions now, we'll go with uh, Professor uh, uh, Balaji. Can you please take it up? And then in the end, we'll have uh, both the uh, speakers couple for questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, please. Sir. Uh, please uh, uh, you know, remove your screen, Ashram. Okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Balaji is an IoT specialist. He has implemented a lot of uh, IoT real-time uh, implementations. He has uh, case studies that he can sh share with us. And um, he is the Dean Research of Velamal. Uh, engineering, right? Over to you, uh, Balaji. Sorry. Yeah. Um, good afternoon and good evening and good morning. Uh, would you please allow me to share my screen? Yeah. Yes, to uh, Shravan, you need to remove your screen. No, no, up, uh, up on the green button. Shravan, you need to remove your screen. Shravan. Are you able to hear my voice? I'm able to hear, but can you stop sharing? Can you have a look? Can you tell me if I have tried? But no, you're you're not uh, still. Uh, you're still sharing. No. No. You go to your Zoom screen. Zoom screen, yeah, correct. And click on uh, again share screen. You will uh, get unmuted. I mean, uh, gone out of it. No. No, nothing is happening. It's not showing. Stop sharing. No. Okay. Um, otherwise, ba Balaji, can you straight away go for sharing? It'll it'll uh, over. Uh, of course, it is uh, uh, telling you cannot start uh, screen share while the other participant is sharing. Yeah, that oh, is oh. where uh, you have to uh, remove it, uh, Balaji. Uh, sorry, uh, Shravan. Okay, just wait. Um, uh, or you do one thing. You uh, you know leave and join back. Uh, yeah, yeah. That is what I'm going. That to is do. a better way. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, good. Uh, 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 Balaji? Uh, hope you are seeing my slides. Yes. Uh, once again, uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Before anything, uh, thank you very much uh, for the organizer uh, giving me the opportunity. And uh, also, I would... Uh, uh, recall the contribution from my research team. Uh, it is not uh, the individual, uh, the result that we are going to um, uh, have, uh, we are going to consider for our discussion. And it is going to be a, uh, it's a collective work. So this would be the outline. Um, anyway, so since uh, the time is so constrained, then I would like to um, uh, skip all those uh, the, the preliminary uh, the level uh, 
the slides. So this thing that I have taken from um, the materials part, which describes about uh, the IoT and uh, the cyber physical system. Of course, it gets uh, support from each other. The people they have uh, illustrated, whoever the people they have been uh, involved in this uh, uh, the research, that's as cyber physical system, they would consider the IoT is an underlying technology. That is what that we would understand from this picture here. That you would see the uh, uh, combined uh, the uh, the activities of uh, CV, CPS and IoT. Whereas uh, here that you could see IoT made as a subset to CPS. CPS and IoT, of course, uh, it is uh, contributing for uh, the other uh, the success. In this uh, kind of the work that you could see, IoT, uh, the CPS uh, made as a subset to IoT. This one, uh, this work, of course, we have, uh, it's uh, from our work, uh, one of our works. Of course, um, um, she is our uh, research scholar, one of research scholars. So in this that you could see the kind of the thing that, because normally the people would say, uh, one of the, the disadvantage, the demerits of uh, the IoT, of course, uh, it's a time delay. Uh, whenever uh, it's a kind of the controlling aspect that um, anyone wanted to use the IoT, uh, people would really show it as a, it's a kind of uh, the demerit because um, and then IoT, uh, the controlling aspect, when it has been incorporated, uh, the time delay, uh, it is going to be one another, uh, the pulling factor, the people would, uh, it, it has been identified. But um, very practically that we wanted to demonstrate, even when you have the IoT, that would be considered for the automation purpose. In that scenario also that you can bring down the impact of time delay. We have had uh, the time delay compensation here. Uh, this is the model predictive controller that we have implemented in which that we have arranged our uh, algorithm part feedback compensator. So of course it is an internet. Uh, this one is a feed forward compensator and uh, we have had uh, the particle swarm optimization tuned uh, the PAD controller in our system. And we have considered uh, the cascade control system to demonstrate the efficiency of uh, the compensator that we have incorporated in a real time scenario in our own microcontroller board. So more detailed story, of course, um, you can have uh, in this paper, uh, if uh, time permits in some other uh, the situation that I would explain you about uh, the way that we have, we have uh, implemented this particular the work. So of course, uh, we have seen number of uh, the speaker, they have uh, made very uh, um, um, enormous uh, uh, the input on the application side. So this would be my kind request, our kind request. Of course, we have uh, uh, this many number of opportunity right now that we have full three full-time doctorates are working in our laboratory and in the different, uh, uh, um, the, the different uh, the component. Of course, you can take the cyber physical system, the IoT, and uh, we are working with a wireless embedded system for uh, environmental monitoring, for agricultural monitoring, as well as some biomedical application too. So we shall have uh, a private discussion if you are uh, interested uh, in collaborating with us uh, in this uh, the research domain. Of course, um, since the time is so constrained that I have removed uh, the first uh, the case study model, that was uh, the first work that we have done uh, prior to this work, network ordered cooperative communication in a real time wireless hospital sensor network. Fortunately, we have uh, uh, collaboration with uh, uh, on a hospital here, Child Trust Hospital Nungambakam, Kanji Kamakodi Child Trust Hospital Nungambakam. Uh, with them, uh, we have done and we have physically demonstrated the wireless sensor node that we developed in our laboratory. So this what our contribution side. So straight away, we can go ahead uh, with the system architecture part. I told you, so we have the collaborator, Dr. Somo Sivabalan, sir, 
um, with whom that we have done this work, the, the, uh, the demonstration and uh, uh, the validation, uh, everything that we have done with, an, uh, with the collaboration, the association that we had with the, uh, Dr. Somo Sivabalan, sir. Um, this would be the uh, deployment scenario. And uh, this is what the wireless sensor node that we developed in our laboratory. Um, that time, uh, the hospital it had uh, four floors. Uh, in uh, each floor, of course, you would be seeing the number of the patients. Everyone would be uh, allowed to wear our uh, the wearable node that we developed, which would be having uh, three uh, physiological sensor, body temperature sensor, SpO2, and the accelerometer. And uh, we also have developed uh, an application programming interface, and we deployed in the duty nurse uh, the mobile phone. Um, normally, the scenario, what it tells about uh, the duty nurse, they have been given with the number of patients in their duty time, and uh, they would be uh, asked to collect the physiological data during their duty time. Once when they leave after their duty time, of course, they have to hand over all other the test reports, what they have collected during the uh, duty time. So, but what we have done for them, uh, this API, of course, uh, this mobile phone, it has uh, two wireless interface, right? Uh, it has the Bluetooth and it has the Wi-Fi. Our board, of course, it has uh, Bluetooth and uh, it has the RF the two, the rack kind of the wireless communication interfaces that we have collected. So the duty nurse, when she go, uh, goes nearer, nearer to the patient, five meters, of course, the Bluetooth, it would transmit all the physiological data to the duty nurse mobile phone. And um, so, um, hence, uh, the duty nurse would collect uh, the physiological data from all other the concern uh, the patients. Once the duty nurse, when she uh, leaves the hospital after her duty time, duty time, this collected information because we are collecting it through uh, when uh, intermediate the chaos node and uh, we have the uh, the destination node and we have directly interface with the um, the server, right? So even the this node also would start to communicate the directly to the server. That kind of the IoT kind of uh, the interaction that we have established is very successfully. And uh, once uh, the other duty nurse, when she comes uh, into the hospital for their duty time, this collected information automatically transferred to other duty nurse. So uh, anyway, so that time is so constrained, I could not able to explain you all other, anyway, so if uh, time permits in some other than occasion, I would explain you each and uh, this particular, the work in a very detailed manner. So this is what the sensor note, what we designed in our laboratory. So, and uh, this is the Texas Instruments Board and uh, embedded interfaces that we have incorporated uh, uh, with this uh, sensor note. And this is the uh, relay scheme, dynamic relay scheme that we have uh, adapted in our uh, the work that you can have the number of sensor nodes, right? And this is the mobile nodes, uh, of course, the mobile phone uh, carried by the, uh, uh, the duty nurse and there is a relay node and this is the destination node and IoT smart gateway. So this one, of course, it so uh, it tells about it describes about the Bluetooth communication with an existing board what we have developed. So you can see the uh, the uh, sensors that we incorporated: MA hundred temperature sensor and the accelerometer and the pulse oximetry. So I told you, we also have developed an application programming interface, right? So with that application programming interface, the duty nurse just to click on uh, the patient name, it would show all other uh, the physiological parameters and uh, the position of the user and all those required information. So this would be the, uh, the node deployment scenario that we have done in the hospital premises. So. Uh, also, the security and privacy also, it's one of the so important the concern because the duty nurse, they have been given alerted with the only uh, the particular the duty nurse. So other duty nurse, they should never collect uh, uh, the patient irrelevant to them. So we would pair on the basis of uh, authentication. Uh, that would be the first level of authentication that would it would do our sensor node and the wearable sensor node what we develop in order to identify the authorized duty nurse before uh, transmit uh, the data. And uh, this is what the original uh, the study that we have done for this particular uh, the case of uh, the patient for the period of 280 minutes. And we were successfully able to uh, 
uh, uh, rise an alarm when the uh, patient uh, when see uh, when they when he comes to uh, the uh, uh, consciousness with this uh, we got one uh, uh, the product development uh, uh, order so we have registered the company and now we are uh, developing uh, a, a simple uh, a model of course for this particular the cause uh, again uh, that's going to be a lengthy discussion again if i do get an opportunity i would explain you the kind of the products that we are developing through our uh, the company that we have established m sensing technologies private limited so the another case study what we have done uh, it's a kind of uh, again iot it has been illustrated with the uh, number of uh, uh, it's a spectrum right so in this particular the work what we have done uh, in this particular the thing uh, of course the wi-fi when we are talking about the wi-fi means the 2.4 gigahertz right bandwidth but when you are looking at the spectrum it would start from 2.392 so even though those channels those spectrum it never be utilized but that also would consume the battery what we thought why don't we utilize unutilized uh, channels so that a channel which would be having the quality uh, the factor which would be utilized to uh, carry more uh, the sizable packets whereas other channel uh, depends on their quality metric we would let them to carry a smaller size packet so eventually what would happen means at the end of the day you would uh, see all other the channels uh, uh, are being utilized to carry somewhat uh, it's a kind of a minimum a minimum amount of data um, the the main idea is anyway those channels never be utilized already uh, and and the most importantly it also would consume the certain energy we wanted to make use of it so that's what that we have done so this also that i would explain you in some other occasion uh, if I do get uh, some opportunity from your end. This is what the overall uh, the characteristics. I told you the channel quality metric that we ascertained with the three channels so that whichever the channel which has the, uh, the best quality, it would be utilized to uh, uh, lead to carry more uh, the sizable packet. Performance also that you could see here. so the another thing is uh, of course a number of uh, the speaker they have uh, added their value for the agriculture monitoring we also have tried and uh, this particular the work supported by department of science and technology and we got the successful patent too and this is the warehouse environment right this is the warehouse environment and this is the sack where uh, through which uh, the uh, warehouse uh, the food grains are being stored normally what would happen means when you are not monitoring the kind of uh, um, the food grains it is being stored and the spoilage it would it would occur right in order to prevent uh, the occurrence of this spoilage uh, the kind of the wireless sensor network that we have uh, uh, deployed in a warehouse environment so for that we have successfully utilized uh, successfully implemented augmented reality and internet of things so you can see here the kind of the node that we developed for this application for uh, all other the purpose very proudly that i can say uh, we are not using the development board uh, available in the market instead depends on the application we would uh, 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 we would develop the uh, wireless embedded system from the scratch so this is the warehouse environment and uh, this is an augmented reality uh, that we have implemented without uh, camera we never used the camera in this uh, virtual reality. That is why that we have gone for the patent filing uh, for this application. So this was the original uh, study that we have done. The results also that you could see. And uh, each and every node, uh, the collected information, CO2, temperature, and the relative humidity. So also what we have done, uh, we have in, we have uh, deployed uh, the IoT enabled uh, the system in a greenhouse monitoring. Here in Madhavaram, we have one horticulture department. 
and uh, we we got the fortunately by god's grace we have the collaboration with them in their premises uh, we deployed our sensor nodes what this sensor node it would do means uh, it would uh, take the full uh, the automation of uh, the full greenhouse so it would uh, monitor uh, the inside uh, the co2 the o2 and uh, the the water the temperature the humidity depends on its uh, the input of course uh, it would have the direct control with the solenoid valve of uh, co2 of the water the sprinkler so it would it would take the uh, the control action and the other important thing is also it would understand the kind of the day time because inside the horticulture inside the greenhouse uh, the night time the co2 level it would be more right so this system it has to understand so which kind of uh, the day time and on the basis of that thing so we have fine tuned our switching time so you can see here the switch on the fogger and the air blower everything that we have demonstrated and even we got one order from one horticulture department one uh, greenhouse uh, um, uh, establishment uh, in chennai so the results also that you can see here so the summary of course uh, um, again we have uh, four more works that we have done um, um, with the contribution from our research scholar if uh, in other occasion if i get if i do get an opportunity i would share it with you all the result also all these work that i would detail uh, i would explain you in detail how we have implemented and what kind of uh, the validation mechanism that we have adapted and uh, right now what is the current status of all those work that we have done if you have any question of course uh, you are most welcome yeah um, participants questions please Malaji, you will have uh, uh, one more uh, occasion on the same topic because uh, University Malaysia Kelantan is asking us to do the same repeat program. They may ask, uh, uh, require your support during that. Yeah, it's fair, sir. It's not right. support. It is my uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. I would do that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. And Dr. Edwin, can you make your validation, please? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I will try to share to share my. You cannot share screen. My other person. Uh, if you can allow me uh, to share a, share a window, uh, yeah. just it will be easy for me to 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 speak. Okay. Are you yeah. able to see my my slides? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Krishna. Thank you for all speakers. Uh, I want to make some highlights of uh, as I saw this this webinar and uh, uh, one things uh, I saw that uh, Dr. Krishna mentioned uh, mentioned the five parts of big data: physical machine, cyber, sensors, intelligence, and uh, action. Uh, if we uh, consider it uh, regarding invest investment, we can see that uh, on left side. We need big investment, and usually it is uh, in relation with uh, high, like large company, multinational companies. Uh, companies on uh, uh, right side, where we have action response, uh, there is a sensors. Sensors is uh, very attractive. Sometimes it is uh, very inexpensive. Sometimes it can be expensive. Uh, what is here uh, chance uh, for developing countries? Uh, here is. Uh, intelligence why because we can work it uh, from our home uh, it requests of us uh, big knowledge went in programming and uh, we can uh, easily get uh, there is a lot of uh, jobs uh, uh, on the market uh, <laughs> on the market so i can divide uh, uh, big data and iot networks in three parts one is left as i saw uh, as i said uh, computers, uh, uh, large, in, uh, large investment, and device, uh, devices still is not clear. We, uh, here is uh, open, open for, for investment, for, for in, uh, research, and uh, very attractive parts. Uh, and behind, behind be, between computers and, and device, 
there is a chance for remote jobs as data programming, data lakes, predict analytics uh, transformation of this da data and uh, analytics. Uh, uh, we saw uh, we saw uh, very in, uh, very interesting the presentations about uh, about this. Uh, if you want uh, to understand big uh, big data, we uh, we have to know what is uh, uh, happening at the moment. And the moment uh, this uh, I think that uh, Igor mentioned that we have a very very fast network and that some application can be performed uh, in one uh, less than one milliseconds millisecond so uh we can mention that uh, we can i can mention that uh, uh we, we are looking for a new fast data instead of big big data uh, fast data <laughs> uh what is fast data uh the exactly definition is uh, when uh, the data is uh, small data is sent uh, to to cloud and return back uh, in real time or near near real time. Uh, this is good for business uh, near, uh, near to real time. But in case of telecom, we are speaking about milliseconds. Uh, we are speaking uh, about uh, decisions uh, in uh, in less than one millisecond. Uh, it. Uh, <laughs> It uh, offered our network 5G. I, I will mention a little bit uh, about about this. Uh, 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 and uh, 5G networks uh, is uh, very. I, I, I have two two slides. Very very short. So, uh, it's very very fast network. <laughs> if we, uh, I can mention that is three times three, three uh, interesting points. It is high inter internet, a lot of IoT devices, and very, very fast uh, around trip time, around trip time. Also, co coverage or availability must have to be 99%. Uh, <laughs> and uh, here is a question, my question, I put myself, what uh, developing countries, uh, what is chance, what opportunities uh, for, for young people uh, in developing countries? Uh, in 5G network because 5G, 5G networks also is big big investment. Uh, it uh, must be country like like big big telecoms so like BH Telecom like like Deutsche Telecom in India. Uh, yeah, but here is uh, uh, as I told, we need a decision in a really a very very short time. So uh, many many programs must be inside of end devices, and uh, sometimes uh, it must make decision. And uh, how to recognize uh, what uh, what small programs, what small volume of data we need inside of uh, of uh, end device. This is uh, uh, this is challenge uh, for for the future for, for the future. And uh, again, it offers us a very big uh, very big uh, opportunities uh, for a remote job. <laughs> At the end. Uh, big data will change social envi environment. Uh, it is very, very good opportunities uh, for developing countries. We saw that here is a lot of uh, programs. Uh, I, I, uh, and uh, but if we, uh, if one want to be in, uh, must understood uh, uh, sensor sites, must understand what is on the on, on the end side of of this network. Uh, they re we can uh, imagine very very inexpensive these uh, devices, but also it can be like robots. Uh, we saw we saw big uh, in agricultural uh, applications uh, applications, and uh, we might have to carry that uh, uh, that some application need very very has has to be very very fast, but some of them uh, of them can work uh, in near uh, to real time. Uh, this is uh, I want to say uh, thank you for speakers. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, big ratings from uh, Bosnia. Today is uh, very, very cold. Last night we had uh, mi minus 16, minus 16 in Bosnia and here is a uh, lot of snow on our mountain. And uh, I hope uh, I will see uh, attend this uh, again in our next next event. Thank you. OK, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh... Uh, Dr. Ani, Dr. Balaji, Dr. Igor, Shravan, uh, you know, everyone, uh, Dr. Edwin's casual leader, right? Uh, friends, um, thank you very much for your all presentations and your certificates of uh, participation would be sent to your email ID to which you have registered. In case if you have not given your email ID, please text it in your uh, chat box.
thank you very much you can uh, leave we have a small one one two minutes with the host and the speakers thank you all thank you and bye thank you and bye Yeah, everyone, uh, we see Priyanka, Malati. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, please leave the uh, in a room so that uh, we have a, a small private discussion. Yeah. Yeah, guys, can you please leave? Sir, you can send us a contact box. You can send to me. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, Priyanka, Mangama, Gopinathan, Alinji, Gomati, Santashila, please leave. Lokesh, Elas, Priyanka again, Vedapriya, Tyagrajan, Adambika, Durai Sami, Nathurai Raman, please, please move. Thank you all. Thank you all for, for your presentation. You know, being present.